Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to IMAG at Home. For our Meet the Keeper today, we are going to be feeding our 3,000 gallon fish tank here behind me. Now, this fish tank is called the Mohawk Tank, and the reason that we call it the Mohawk Tank is because we've got this big boat in here. Now, this is actually a replica of the USS Mohawk. Now, the USS Mohawk is an old Coast Guard ship that was out of commission, and they actually decided to intentionally sink the ship to use it as an artificial reef. Now, the purpose of an artificial reef is just sinking something that you wouldn't normally find out in actual ocean water, but it's to create habitat. So if you've got this big boat with all of these rooms and places to swim in and out of, it allows space for all of these different fish to be able to live and call home. Now, this tank was actually made by the Animal Planet Show tank here about four years ago. If you guys are stuck at home right now, you can actually find the episode on AnimalPlanet.com. It is season 10, episode seven, and the name of the episode is Imaginarium Tank. So it's about an hour long episode, but you can see how we got this tank here in the building and just kind of how it all started. Now, this USS Mohawk ship is actually sunk here in Fort Myers. So out off the coast of Fort Myers, they sunk the ship to use the artificial reef. And what we've done is a lot of the fish that we have in this tank are actually native fish here in Florida or here in the Gulf of Mexico. That means that most of these are fish that you might actually see out on the USS Mohawk. So people will go out and they will dive this shipwreck just to see everything that's going on with it. But we wanted to be able to bring that here to people that might not be able to get down deep in the ocean and be able to dive with everything. So this is kind of a little mini version of what you would see out there. Now, it is right around lunchtime here today, so we are going to go ahead and get ready to feed these guys in just a minute. So I'm going to show you what these guys are going to be eating today. Now, these guys get a variety of foods here. So the first thing they're going to be getting today are going to be these little pellets here. Now, these pellets have all sorts of important nutritious things for them, so we are going to give them these pellets first. So kind of think of it with your kids. If you are giving your kids candy, or vegetables and you give them the option to pick one over the other, most of the time they're gonna pick their candy. So we feed them their pellets first that have all the important stuff that they need in them. And then after that, they're gonna start getting their treats. Now, what they're gonna get here in this bowl, we've got a variety of different meaty foods. We've got some minnows, silver sides, shrimp, and different chunks of squid and squid tentacles. So you'll notice that we have a variety of different sizes of food in the, in the bowl here, and that's because we have a variety of different sized fish in our tank, and we wanna make sure that all the fish are able to get plenty of food. So we're gonna have Christian go ahead and head around the tank and get ready to feed these guys. And as we feed, I'll talk about some of the animals that get to call the USS Mohawk their home. So you will notice that the fish know when they are getting fed. You can train anything that eats, so once they see that ladder and that white bowl, they know that it is just about lunchtime for them, and they're all gonna make their way towards the top of the tank. Now, the lid actually here comes apart to allow us to get in and feed, and as soon as they see that, we have almost all of our fish up there getting ready for some food. So the first thing that you guys will see him putting in are gonna be those pellets again. We wanna make sure they get those pellets there because they're a very important part of their diet. So here you go, they're all going after those pellets, especially the smaller fish that we have here. Now, some of those smaller fish, those really tiny silver ones with blue lines, those guys are our blue striped grunts. Now, the reason that they are called grunts is they actually are able to make this kind of pig-like grunting noise. So that's how they got their name. We also have our sheep's head in here. Those guys are gonna be the ones that are gray and have those black vertical stripes on them. We got five of those guys in the tank. And the weirdest thing about our sheep's head is they actually have human-like teeth. So if you guys are at home, I highly recommend looking up Atlantic sheep's head teeth. They look incredibly like human teeth. It looks just a little bit weird, but we find them pretty cool for that. Now they still got some pellets coming in there. You can see some of the bigger fish are starting to come up too, getting ready. So those larger fish that are silver with that big yellow stripe down them and those yellow tails, those are called the yellow tail snapper. Now these yellowtail snapper are actually pretty small. Those guys can grow to almost three feet long. So those guys still have a lot of growing here left to do in that tank. Now they're finally starting to get their meaty food. You can see they get a little more excited for their meaty food than they do for those pellets. And they are all just grabbing them up, trying to take them down. The other really large fish that you'll see kind of hanging out towards the bottom down there is our snook. Now, snooks are really common here. They are a common sport fish. 
They can grow really large and they're known as a fighting fish. So our snook in there is right around 18 inches long. He's the biggest fish that we have in the tank right now. When he does come up for food, he usually hits it pretty hard. One of the fish that we have in here that is actually not native is that kind of square looking fish that just grabbed a piece of food. That square looking fish with those little dots is known as a spotted scat. Now those guys are actually a brackish water fish that is native to Australia. The reason they got the name scat is because they thought that those guys ate poop. And once they did more studying and they realized they eat algae, no one was nice enough to change their name, so they are still called scats. But we think he's pretty cute. He has been in this tank with us for quite a while here. You can see those yellowtail snapper are very, very hungry, coming up and grabbing all of that food. Now, these guys get fed four times a week. We don't want to overfeed them because anything that you put into a fish tank, you're going to get back in those nitrates and ammonia from the fish poop or any extra food. Now, you see one more fish coming up there. We have our zebra moray eel that just came out of the boat. Our zebra moray eel is actually named Captain because he spends most of his time in the boat. And you'll notice he just grabbed, it looks like a minnow, and he made his way right back to the boat. So he is not very good at competing with food. All eels actually have really bad eyesight. So he has a hard time getting food and he has a hard time fighting other fish for food. So as soon as he gets a piece, he has straight back down to the bottom, back to hide and back to make sure that he is gonna be able to eat his piece of food. Now, that is all today. Thank you guys so much for joining us. If you guys have any questions about our USS Mohawk tank, definitely feel free to ask and we will be more than happy to answer. Now, again, if you guys want to see this episode, try to find it. It is season 10, episode 7 of the Animal Planet Show tank. You will get to learn a lot of things about this tank, some of the mishaps that they had when they were building it, and even the fact that this tank weighs over 25,000 pounds. That's because a gallon of salt water weighs eight and a half pounds and this tank is over 3,000 gallons. So if you watch that episode of Tank, you'll be able to learn this and all sorts of other really cool facts about this tank. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and we hope to see you again soon. And one more thing, even in the times of uncertainty that we're all going through, we're still here every day feeding and taking care of all of our wonderful animals. And if you're able to, the animals could use your support. If you're able to, please head on over to our website, theimag.org, and click on the Donate Now button. Even if you are unable to donate, please continue to watch, like, and share our videos to help us out. Thank you all for your continued support of the IMAG History and Science Center, and stay safe, everyone.